Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're here in Washington, D.C. in the offices of Dick Todd Shapiro Law Firm. To my right, immediate right, is Senator, U.S. Senator Joseph Tidings, uh, formerly uh, U.S. Senator from Maryland, Democrat, and to my left is Ms. Christina Gray from Franklin, Tennessee. We're only here on the occasion <clears throat> with the Senator and Ms. Gray, and in front of me is a Coblock Lifetime Achievement Award. This is a natural Tennessee walking horse. This award is being presented today to U.S. Senator Joseph Tidings for all of his lifetime work of accomplishment and achievement on behalf of this breed of horse. This is a Tennessee walking horse. He's not built up. He's natural. That's the way the horse started off. That's what he needs to go back to. That's the future of this breed. We're the Citizens Campaign Against Big Lick Animal Cruelty. We're against the uh, mistreatment of these horses. It's a We the People advocacy group. We've gone from the Gulf of Mexico at Panama City Beach to the Blue Ridge Mountains of Asheville, North Carolina, in front of the White House on March 29th with 100,000 signatures supporting the regulation to remove the pads and chains from the Tennessee walking horse. We've had more than 45 protests in front of horse shows. We've gone into horse shows. We've taken videos. We've put them on the Internet. They've been seen by millions of people. The Dodo video released on March uh, 7, 2017 has been seen almost 14 million times. It features a horse that Mrs. Gray took care of named Jen's Ice Glimmer. It shows the big lick animal cruelty. It has, also has a, a picture of honors at Asheville last year. Ms. Gray has protested a number of times and been a profile in courage, I would say. Uh, Christina, talk a little bit about Coblock and what it has meant. And let me interject one more thing. Coblock was started in 2015. There was a federal court decision in New Orleans, Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, where the basically the horses lost the case. Uh, it was actually the USDA. They were going to impose man mandatory minimum penalties on the people that saw the horses. The case was appealed and it was thrown out. Two weeks later, Coblock started a change.org petition in Jackson, Mississippi. It asked the University of Mississippi Children's Hospital to not accept the $50,000 a year donation from Big Lick Animal Cruelty Horse Show. University of which I graduated, or they let me out twice, took about seven days and publicly announced they were disassociating itself. They would not accept the money, and then Coblock has been on a roll ever since. Christina, talk a little bit about the protest and your role in supporting this citizen's advocacy. Coblock is a grassroots movement people from all around the world support the I'm sorry it's a very emotional issue and it's sometimes hard for me to my, gather my thoughts they seem far ranging and Well let, let me ask broad. you a question. But no I, I can answer. Just you. tell me the yes. protests you've been to. The protests and, and I've look been right to, there at Chris. Uh, I've been to um, protests in Nashville there on right in front of the Parthenon. We, I've been to a couple in Columbia, Tennessee, which seems to be really the, the, the center of all of this. I've been to protest several of them in Shelbyville, Tennessee, and then at the Tennessee State Fair, we've also protested. And then I've had the honor of going to the State House in Nashville to present a petition to the governor's office. That's Governor Bill Haslam, correct? Yes, indeed. They were contemplating actually giving funds to try to justify the big lick, were they not? Yes. Okay. And as a Tennessean, you found that objectionable? Objectionable would be an understatement. I find it an appalling abuse of taxpayers' money. Well, let me recount one more thing. I was with you and watched you. Did you not stand over in front of the White House on uh, Pennsylvania Avenue here recently in the last two months? I did. It was a very interesting experience. It was an honor. It's always an honor to be in Washington, D.C. And to did you have a book in front of you? With the I had 000? a very large book in front of me, yeah. which was representative of the 100,000 signatures requesting removal of the pads and chains. Right. And behind us was a banner showing Jen's eyes glimmer feet as they were photographed in my yard. Correct. And I practiced law for decades with no with no card, but when I got into this I got a card, Senator. And the banner is on part of the card. Chris may zoom in and get the picture of Glimmer's feet. But we're here today to present the award to the Senator. And Senator, I'm gonna move this award over and ask you to comment in any way, shape, form or fashion that you'd like about this subject of the cruelty. 
your role in it, and uh, we're just looking to hear for, from you, sir. First of all, <clears throat> I'd like to thank this lovely young woman for the courage that she showed in getting out in front in this very, very di difficult arena. And you too, Clint, you too. Thank you. Uh, and I speak to all of the associates of my grandchildren, my children. These beautiful horses and our civilization, mankind civilization as we know it, has been based on beautiful young small horses from the time civilization first started. The despicable practice of some groups of owners and lazy, miserable trainers who would go and cripple these beautiful horses, their feet, because they're too lazy to train the horse properly. And they put nails, acid, all sorts of things in these horses' feet so the horse can't even put his foot feet down. Then they get the horse out in the show ring and they force him to trot and rack on when he can't even put the foot down in order to get this exaggerated bait gait which is used in show rings. This is a, a, a travesty of human nature and despicable cruelty. Very difficult to fight against this because some very powerful senators, Mitch McConnell, who is the Republican leader of the Senate, all tied up, money and what have you, from horse owners, horse trainers, and unfortunately the um, Senator from Tennessee and Senator were the same way. The only hope we have of protecting these wonderful horses is citizens like you, Clant, with the beautiful young lady here with me, to get involved. We got the original Horse Protection Act passed in nine, it took me three years, that was 1968 through 1970 was a horse named Papa Charcoal, and somewhat what you're doing here today, we got Life Magazine to run a picture of Ch Papa Charcoal, and that's how we finally got, we didn't get the bill we wanted to, because it, in order to get Republican support and what have you, we had to make it not a felony but a misdemeanor and make it more difficult to enforce. But nevertheless, the law is on the books, we need it enforced, and the work that the people I'm here with today is outstanding. We need to protect these beautiful horses and bring back the breed so they can compete in the show ring as they always used to prior to World War II when these despicable trainers and owners decided that, that rather than take the time to train the horse, they would cripple them in their front feet for life. Senator, let me jump in and ask you something, please. And you and I've discussed it, but I'd like you to go on the record and make this for history. When you were before your Senate committee, they were considering the Horse Protection Act. Uh, there was a horse in the parking lot named Papa Charcoal. That's yeah. right. Papa Charcoal was the one that was written up in, in uh, Life magazine. It was quoted in Life magazine. I have a picture of Life uh, Papa Charcoal signed by Chapa Car. Obviously not by him, but yes, the, but the lady, Ms. just Blue. like yourself, Joan Blue. Yeah, yes. it's, it did it in there, and it's framed in my home. Am I correct in understanding? that you recessed that Senate committee and you took those United States Senators into the parking lot and you let introduce them to Papa Charco? Oh yes, oh yes, <laughs> absolutely. Bear in mind I grew up on a farm. I had a pony when I was 10 or 11. I was in the last horse cavalry unit in the U.S. Army, World War II, active. I mean, I love horses. I have loved them all my life, um, all kinds of horses. But these beautiful, beautiful Tennessee walking horses to be the subject of such cruelty is despicable. Senator, that day those senators saw a crippled, abused, scarred Tennessee walking horse, did right. they not? Papa Charcoal. Did it take them long to go back in and vote? No, 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 no. We, 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 and we, had, we got a unanimous vote. Now, I had to water it down to get yes, everybody sir. unanimous. I had to. I would have liked to have had a felony and I would have liked to have much stiffer penalties, but I needed to get the bill through so we could at least have it on the books. Christine, I want to ask you about your role. There's a horse that was rescued by the Horse Plus Humane Society of Hohenwald, Tennessee, 
and this person speaking. That was my privilege. He was at auction. He was scarred. He wore eight-pound shoes. He had braided mane in his braid in his mane. He was ready to go to a horse show, and they're going to put him through the ring with a one-way ticket. They offered him for sale on Craigslist for seven hundred and fifty-seven dollars before they took him to the horse show. The offer was about a week before. The person there sent me pictures of those feet. I said, "We buy this horse. We bought him. We brought him." tracked his movement, got a chain of custody, going to the vet, having the USD document the abuse on his feet. All this was done in a short period of time, and then he had to have a home where people and the media could go meet him. And that's where Ms. Gray came in. I had met Ms. Gray when she protested in Nashville, and that's what this is. This is a grassroots We the People. It's a network. It's a synergy. Things that's happen. Wonderful, things yeah. happen. That's wonderful. And she took this horse and kept him for a month at her home with her window open at night where she could hear him if he needed anything. And she took care of him. Talk about that, Christina. Well, it's, it's really one of the highlights of my life. Uh, that, And I do mean that. There was a knock on the door at night, and Clint was there. I, I barely knew the man. I had met him at the protest. But he knew that I had a barn and a couple of horses. And he said this horse had been rescued and needed a home immediately. And he said, fine, bring him on. We're about 10 minutes from Channel 4, WSMV TV, NBC affiliate, is that correct? Yes, yes, it, yes indeed. And I have two retired horses at my home. One is a retired uh, short stir Connemara pony. And Connemara he, pony? Yes, yeah. Oh, what wonderful ponies. I mean, they are. She's magnificent beautiful. jumpers yes. too, the yes, Connemara ponies, I mean they are the world's best. Yes, she is, and I had a retired therapeutic horse who was also there. They're retired, they're elderly. Was it, one, was it, the, was it the boss mare named Felony? Felony's the boss. And she's about half glimmer size, correct? Yeah, she's not but there. She, but she bossed him around pretty Right, good. she's about 14 too. And so glimmer came, the, the trailer pulled up, I had my horses out in the field, and uh, when that trailer door opened and I saw this magnificent animal, I was terrified. He was on stacks, yay high. Uh, Glimmer's, Glimmer's about 16. He's a big old boy. He's, he's a big horse. He was towering Anger. above me. Right. He, watching him get off that trailer, he had no idea what to do with his legs. He saw the grass, didn't know what to do with it. Of course, we had to get him in the stall and put away. And, I quickly learned how to take care of a horse who was unable to even do something as simple as eat the grass. His stacks were so high, it, it was all he could do to spread his legs. He had shift. to stand on one foot and go almost yes. to a knee to get a mouth of it grass. It was agonizingly painful to watch him. All right, so we had Glimmer there before yes. the celebration in 2015. And Ms. Nancy Amons, an award-winning investigative reporter, came out to your farm, and she told the story of Glimmer to the world right before the celebration. And letting the world know about the animal cruelty has basically made the big lick unmarketable. The citizens of Tennessee are to be commended. They're boycotting the big lick. They boycotted it most recently June 1 through 3. We had to go to court and get a court order in the Middle District of Tennessee, that's federal court, in order to have not anyone interfere with us in taking videos and putting them on the internet. So at your place, at your farm, you had Glimmer for about a month, and on toward the end, we had veterinarians out, we had expert barriers and consultation, and the decision was made after we were sure his inner workings of his hoof were fine to remove his shoes. You remember that day? Uh, very, very clearly. And you, me I, you remember we weighed the shoes? We weighed the shoes. I have a uh, professional shipping scale, weighed them. Each one weighed over eight pounds. Right at, right about eight pounds. Right. Each one tipped the scale at eight pounds. Close. Right? close. Very close. Very close. Uh, and um, it's just, it's hard to believe that this is done to an animal. The stench as those came off, because those shoes had been on him. They can't take them off. The horse's hooves can't be cleaned. Uh, we weighed those. His feet were trimmed up a bit. Gradually, over time, more and more he could go back to a normal hoof. Uh, of course, the part that will never, ever heal, never disappear completely, is the permanent scarring, and that's why he was dumped at the auction. Let me tell you a little bit more about Glimmer. 
Okay, we removed his shoes, but we were very careful about letting Extremely him out. Extremely careful. We kept him up, but one day, not long after his shoes were removed, I took him out for a walk. You guys were there. I said, go get down at the end of the fence. <laughs> and I, I've handled colts a lot in my life, Senator. I showed halter colts. I raised, I was around for about 150 colt births. I, and I've raised, those were, those were my, like my children. I knew what I was doing with Limber. We were all there. I turned him loose. He let out across there in the most natural flowing gait you'll ever want to see, flat. We videoed it. That video is now on what's called the dodo, what soaring does to horses. It was released on March 7, 2017. The dodo called me and said, I understand you have video we might like to use to show what the big lick is. And I said, who are you people? Well, everybody in the animal world knows who dodo is. They are just prolific producers of things involving animals. I said, okay, they took it, they produced a two-minute video. It's been seen almost 14 million times. That's why the Big Lick is not marketable. That's why we got the federal court order for our people to go in, exercise their First and Fourteenth Amendment rights, take pictures, put them on social media, and that's what you told me to do when we were last interviewed here in this building, to get it on social media. Absolutely. Get it on social media, get it on television. I mean, if the children at the if the high school leaders in our country, particularly in the South, because this is primarily a problem in the South, the Deep South, it's only a few states, particularly Tennessee, Kentucky, parts of Carolina, uh, down Georgia, Mississippi, um, where they have these big horse shows and people who will do anything to get a big trophy and they don't care how cruel they are to the animals to get the trophy. But if we could get the young people involved in, in this whole movement and to protest, and it's difficult to protest because, because some of these owners and trainers are mean people, tough people. They beat you up. They threaten you. I mean, you're, you're physically at risk when you even take a picture. Uh, and so this is a, an area where really we need the young people of Kentucky and Tennessee to really get up and get involved in this. Well, Senator, you and I are kind of young, aren't we? Don't, don't we feel young? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. We're going to continue this on behalf of these horses that cannot speak for themselves. We will be at the horse shows. We will go in with the, back, the, with the First Amendment behind us. And if it takes a federal court order, we'll have a federal court order. We're going to continue to put these pictures and videos on the internet where Senator Tidig says to rally the citizens of the South. And Let me add one thing. Yes, sir. If Robert Kennedy were alive and Attorney General, he'd be on this television with me. I, he would. I don't doubt a word you're saying. And I he would. remember the late Senator Robert Kennedy, who came to the University of Mississippi not long after we integrated. He had the same love of horses that I do. That's, that's absolutely too. correct. His wife did too. Now, let me mention one more thing. There's a lot of parallels in this struggle that we're having on behalf of these horses in the Civil Rights Movement. I'm from Mississippi. I can speak to that. I grew up in the 60s. This is a way of life. These are not bad people per se, but they're doing something extraordinarily wrong. There's going to have to be some leadership from the Big Lick area, and I'll name names. Jeffrey Howard, whose late father, David Howard, died back in December. Jeffrey needs to step up. All these other leaders they have, they need to step up too. This is what they need to go back to. They need to, some way, somehow, rebrand. They need to let this horse be what it can be. It needs to be the natural Tennessee walking horse. America is through with the Big League horse. It's not going to have any support. And let me call out one more name. The senator didn't go there, but I'm going to go there. Lamar Alexander's on the wrong side of history. He's a great American. He's a senator from Tennessee. He's been our Secretary of Education for this country. He ran for president. He's a great American, but he's wrong on this subject. He's on the wrong side of history. I call on you, Senator Alexander, to look within your soul and to, and to, and to your conscience and do something to get these people in charge of this animal cruelty to go another direction. You're at the end of your career. You don't have anything to lose. This may be your last term. I don't know. You may live to serve two more terms, but I appeal to you, sir. You're the man in charge. Tell them, persuade them, guide them. But let's get away from the big lick. 
Now I've had my say, Senator. What else do you need to tell? Uh, I think I think we we need to save these wonderful horses and stop this despicable cruelty for a few bucks on big trophies for rich people who support politicians like Mitch McConnell in uh, Kentucky. And unfortunately, Senator Alexander needs to get on. Needs to get out in front. Yes, sir. Let me mention about Senator McConnell. I have personal experience. I come from the sore side of the fence. There's not anything they do that I had not seen or know about. I'm not an expert. I thought we were relatively humane in what we did, but it still was wrong. Mitch McConnell was elected to the United States Senate about 1988, more or less. The Big Lick had their lights turned off at Decatur, Alabama at a horse show called The Trainer Show. Russell Gaspar represented the organization that Mrs. Blue founded in bringing about that action. That next morning, the Big Lick had a come to Jesus meeting out in the center ring, and they started raising three or four hundred thousand dollars. Then they found a young senator from Kentucky named Mitch McConnell. Senator McConnell was elected with about one percent of the vote, and they started donating money to him in 1988. Well, as of now, he's been the donations have accumulated to maybe seven hundred fifty thousand dollars to a million. How do I know that? I was there that morning that they raised the money. I know what they did with it. I know how they've given it to him every year. And he's steadfast. He stayed hitched. He's not going to unhitch. He's serving until 2020. And as long as he's living and he's in that majority, the PAST Act will not get a vote. That's right. He, he just won't. It. He kills it. That two thirds of the Senate and two thirds of the House of Representatives support of strengthening the law. And Mitch McConnell killed it, wouldn't allow it to be voted on in the Senate. This past week, I was at the American Horse Council. This issue came up about the regulation. Where is it? And they were explaining it. And I stood up and I asked, look, this thing got to the one yard line and then it didn't get into the end zone. What chance does it have of going forward? I didn't get a straight, I mean, I got an answer, but it wasn't a direct answer. And in essence, the answer was, well, it's just in limbo and we're working on it. Only answer that I know to any of this is we, the people. We, the people, can go stand in front of those horse shows we can get inside those horse shows, take pictures, take videos, and put them on the internet. If we do that, then these politicians at some point are going to catch on. And in the meantime, the people perpetrating this animal cruelty are going to have a very difficult way to go. Let's hope so. Let's pray. Yes, sir. Could I say something? You certainly may. As a Tennessean, as an American, I find this absolutely abhorrent that this vile, foul practice continues to this day. I've heard the lies. I hear it at every protest. I've been threatened. Other protesters have been threatened. We are not going away. We're not. This is the United States of America. This is my breed. I'm a Tennessean. This is my horse. This horse belongs to the people of Tennessee. It belongs to the citizens of the United States of America. Big moneyed interests have had their day. They've had 50 years to clean this mess up. They're not going to. So they're just going to have to go away because we're not going to. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Senator. Thank you very much. Here's, here's your award, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. That's beautiful. Well, thank um, you so much, Senator Tidings. You have well, I wish I did, could have done more. Hey, listen. Had I been reelected, it would have been a different story. You got my vote.